So we're now going to move to our third and final speaker. I think we only have to. No, 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 no. I think we only need to move about a foot because um, our third speaker, I believe, is the sister of Krishna Prem, right? Is that right? Shumati Mandridili, also from Vancouver. Uh, she took Harinam from Shila Gurudev and then took Diksha from Shila Bhakti uh, Vigyan Bhakti Maharaj and was born as a devotee in the Sharanavati village, right? And uh, again, a very, very warm welcome to thee. And um, please offer us your push Punjali. And remember, it's a very friendly, very sweet family crowd. So don't be shy. Hari Bol, Um, We'll just do my push uh, my pronouns. Um, Namo Vishnu Padaya Radhika Brahmane Shushima Bhaktivedanta Narayani Tinamine. Shri Krishna Lila Katane Sudaksham, Adurya Madhurya Ganeshri Tam, Param Varenyam Purusham Mahantam, Narayanam Tvam, Shirisha Namami, Shri Randinam Bhakta Shiramanimscha, Shri Krishna Parabja Ditai Kirdi, Chaitanya Lila Mita Sarasaram, Narayanam Tvam, Shirisha Namami, Namam Vishnu Paraya Gora Prishtaya Bhutale, Shri Shima Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Tinamine, Shri Krishna Jaitanya Kripai Kavita, Yamarya Dharakshati Vaishnavanam, Kripavala Madhava Prishtakami, Shri Bhakti Tham Bharati Mashayamana. So, Vanchaka Patri Vyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha, Patita Nam Pavane Vyo, Vaishnavi Vyo Namanama. So, I offer my pranams to Srila Gurudev, my Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. Um, all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis here. Um, it's a really great honor to speak in front of everyone. Um, I feel completely <laughs> junior to everybody here. And um, yeah, especially to call myself a disciple of Srila Gurudev feels uh, like a big stretch, but also, uh, you know, an honor. Almost like an affirmation I was thinking today. <laughs> You know, the more you say an affirmation, the more I feel like it comes true. So, um, yeah, um, definitely. Um, I think as you were saying at the beginning of this, there's different different types of disciples. And uh, just today there was, they released one memory. I think his name is Gopi Janavalaba Prabhu. And um, he spoke about um, how, yeah, how he received a uh, diksha, I think, from Srila Prabhupada from cassette. And then, um, so yeah, I, um, I just, um, yeah, that's kind of my situation. So it's why I uh, feel kind of like, um, yeah, just very junior, super junior. And then also um, I received Harinam from Gurudev in kind of a, a different way. So, Today, I kind of want to tell that story and my relationship to Srila Gurudev. Um, Gurudev told me um, we can talk about Srila Bharati Maharaj, so I'll try and share a little bit about that. And um, yeah, I, I feel like I, even my brothers, <laughs> you know, first of all, he was nervous to speak Aikata today. And then he, you know, he said he had very minimal experience. And then for me, I saw how nicely he spoke, so I feel more nervous now. <laughs> um, and then uh, on top of that, I have much less experience than he did, like just a small fraction, but um, somehow, you know, Gurudev is also transcendental. So hopefully I can, I, I'm always hoping to remember that aspect of Srila Gurudev as well, um, his Vani and his, um, his Vapu is like transcendental and powerful, but also his Vani. So yeah, I was born uh, in Sharanagadi, some kind of mercy and blessing. <laughs> Um, and I, I don't know if I was, if I had Gurudev's darshan at that point, he came in 1996 and I was like maybe three years old. So I like to imagine I somehow was in his president presence at that time. So I was fortunate, but I know my, my parents, um, saw him at that time. And then, um, yeah, I grew up in Sharon Agadi, Vancouver, near the Vancouver Iskon temple later. Um, like my brother said, we had so much association of Gurudev Sangha when we were younger. Well, not so much, but enough that it was quite, made quite an impression on me. I remember uh, sitting in this temple room in Sharon Agadi and 
Prem Prayojan was giving Hari Kata and Gurudev's moods just came through when he was around your Maharaj. Gurudev's moods just came through these Vaishnavs so powerfully, like uh, Vishaka Didi and Kishoy Mohan and Sudevi's Kirtans. And, you know, being raised around so many, like such a strong Vaishnav community, but um, it was just like, it was like color in life that I never experienced before. I remember hearing Rani Maharaj's classes like Radha and Krishna and Govardhan and everything felt so just alive. And I don't think I ever really listened to a class before that. So um, it was very inspiring, even though I was in the back coloring. And then I think at that time, I also remember starting to learn um, bhajans from the songbook. We had these little cassette tapes. Um, I think the Madhavi Didi um, recorded them and learning the Madhurastakam, I remember it was a really nice song. I got to sing it one time with uh, our god sister Kunti. Um, so yeah, that was like pretty much how my seed was planted with Srila Gurudev. There was some talk at one point he would come to Sharanagadi, maybe even stay in our house there. And we were so kind of like fired up, all the young kids like, oh yeah, he's gonna come and maybe he's like gonna fight with Iskon. We thought like, oh, Gurudev's gonna win. We had this like simple mood, I remember as a child, but we, we had this rocking chair in our house. We envisioned Gurudev could come and sit there. And it never ended up happening, but that was always like from my youth, I always felt like Gurudev was, you know, guru like to me, you know, in our family. And in 2001, I think our father took Diksha from him and everything. Um, and, you know, we, we just because of, yeah, our Sukriti or something, we never got to go to Badger Festival, but he always felt like a guru, even living at this Iskon temple I remember one time I found a songbook in the the entry of the temple, like in the closet, like someone had just hid it there or something. And I found this and I thought, oh, this is Gurudev's songbook. And I just brought it home. And <laughs> it was always like Gurudev was our guru and it was, you know, a nice thing. Then, um, uh, yeah, so later in my life, we moved kind of away from the temple. There's Vancouver Island and I um, went to high school there. Yeah, then 2008 Gurudev came um, our brother, yeah, that's when he stole Krishna Prem from us. <laughs> and um, I remember this was like my main really memory with Gurudev physically is just him walking into this temple and there's crowds of people and I never got introduced to him because I just didn't happen to be standing next to my father at that time, I guess. Um, but I remember he came and I was surrounded by all these people. I don't think anyone I even really knew in that moment. And then um, all these Matajis were around me and they all dove down to offer pranams and Somehow I knew, yeah, I better do that. <laughs> and then I saw them when I was all down there, they're all just grabbing for Gurudev's feet. So I thought, oh yeah, I better do that. Like, that's smart, <laughs> um, you know? And then I never really did that before in my life, like in Iskand, although I saw, you know, devotees do that, or maybe I did that with maybe Arnir Maharaj, anyway. So he touched Gurudev's lotus feet and I stood up and he just glanced at me for one second as he's walking and having a small interactions and just his blue eyes. I, I always remember that moment, it's like, they say like one split second of, you know, association of a sadhu. And I felt like very exposed, you know, <laughs> I, I was not like prepared to feel that or not, you know, I don't know if I really understood who Srila Gurudev was, but I always remember this feeling I had when he looked at me for a second, I felt very like taken back or like uncomfortable, like awkward. <laughs> I was maybe like a, just like 13 or like a really young girl at that time. But um, I felt like Gurudev really saw me and, like saw right into my heart, like anything uncomfortable there, he saw everything. And, you know, I learned over the years that Gurudev's also seeing, you know, who we can be, who we can become. So um, I always feel grateful that I had that just one, I heard it's called a zap, Gurudev zaps you just by looking. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was um, kind of the main physical experience. And then, so how I got Harinam from Gurudev after that is, it's kind of like a special story. So, um, kind of personal, but I like to share it because I feel like it's very amazing to see Gurudev's omniscience. I know there's so many stories like this and over the years I've heard so many of them and they're very um, just powerful and inspiring. So yeah, it was, it was like, I um, became kind of independent as a teenager. So it's also, I don't like to tell the story because <laughs> that's the, the, the background, but um, I was like 17, just finishing high school and I was kind of living very independently from my family, but I started getting these emails um, because somehow or other I was on the Harikata mailing list, so Isha Prabhu's emails. And um, I got these emails that Gurudev was sick and they were asking for medicine or suggesting people go to India. Um, yeah, the other amazing part about this is that, you know, even in the Acharyas, when they 
leave, but they're, they're pulling devotees closer to them. So everything is completely an act of mercy, even their disappearance, you know? So for people like myself who are so unfortunate to not appreciate <laughs> his, you know, presence and not take those opportunities when they were available, I think that summer before his disappearance pastimes, uh, I had an opportunity maybe to go to Gopinath Bhavan and I didn't take it. There were some options to do that, but anyway. Um, yeah, I, I heard Gurudev was sick and I thought, you know, I was even telling my friends like, oh, my guru, and they're like, yeah, you have to see your guru. <laughs> um, and then I um, I emailed my, I, I spoke to my parents and I said like, oh, if you, I told my father, if you go to India, please take me. And um, I don't know what, why I had that strong inspiration. I feel like I was very far away from Bhakti, but you know, I was also learning about the world at that time, like just almost like, you know, could say conspiracy theories like people talk about now, but just understanding like there's, you know, a lot of darkness in the world. I was like becoming more aware of the world and the reality and just uh, politics. I don't know, a lot of things. And I thought, wow, Gurudev really is one special thing. <laughs> you know, there's such a pure loving presence in this world is very rare. So um, yeah, I wrote my parents. I couldn't, I couldn't go at that time. I was just finishing school and um, I was, Really, I was putting so much energy into that, so it wasn't really aligned. Um, but I, I had that intention. I started chanting a lot more at that time. Just Gurudev was pulling me somehow by this pastime. It was his cause, his mercy, and then um, I was chanting on my childhood japa, and and then so yeah, that time passed. Things started changing in my life. I feel like I, I without knowing, a lot of positivity was coming. And then, so after that, in February 2011. Uh, my father on my birthday, he gave me a gift. Um, I never, I wasn't, I didn't see him so often. I was living in a separate place. And then he gave me um, this Japa Mala and he explained this story that happened. So he went to India in 2010 and um, uh, when I didn't go, but he, so this whole thing kind of happened. It felt like Radharani's mercy and Gurudev's, of course, Gurudev's mercy as a representative of Srimati Radhika. So Gurudev was, um, or my father was chanting his mantras in the, in the, I think somewhere, one maybe Radhakund or somewhere, chanting his Gayatri and his things were on the bank. And um, a monkey stole his beads and jumped on the roof and he couldn't get them back. So some, even some bridge bosses saw that happen. They're trying to get those things. And uh, my father tried after he finished his mantras and tried to go and he couldn't get it. So he thought, okay, better get some new beads. And then, um, he thought of me because I wrote him and he thought, oh, maybe I'll get some for her as well. And he got an extra pair for me and uh, went. And then it was his last, everyone only had those five minutes with Sri the Gurudev. So he, he asked, he asked Gurudev, Gurudev, I just <laughs> lost my beads. You know, I've heard lots of stories with Gurudev and that he wasn't pleased with those kind of things happening. But anyway, he said, can you bless these again for me? So Gurudev did. And then um, he said, oh, I have this pair for my daughter. I don't know, it always makes me, <laughs> it's just like, um, you know, I feel like Guru really hears your heart, even if you're not, you know, in front of him. So he said, my daughter has a desire to chant now. Can you bless these for her? Only like, only time I cry for Guru Dave is I tell this story. <laughs> That's why I like to tell it. But anyway, so, uh, um, yeah, so Guru Dave just like nodded his head and, you know, gave his blessings and touched the beads just, and I found out later that's all he was really doing at that time if people wanted initiation. Um, so yeah, he blessed those beads and he, you know, gave his blessings and uh, my father later gave me those beads and I remember just feeling them. Um, he had dipped them in Radhakund, Shamakund and everything, had ghee, but the smell of those beads, it felt like Gurudev's like praying particles all over them. <laughs> and I remember just like picking them up and I would just hold them and it felt like, wow, like an umbilical cord really to Srila Gurudev. And I just really understood that he, he could hear me in every moment and so just after that time, I finished high school and then, um, yeah, I traveled with, uh, a lot of things changed because of that. I, my faith was, I just felt like Gurudev was really there, you know? So it's interesting because for a lot of people that was, you know, a difficult time, but somehow for me, it was when I was just coming to Gurudev. So <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of meeting mood rather than separation, although it's like kind of simultaneous, but um, I, um, yeah, and then somehow or other, Shamarani and all the, these, you know, merciful Vaishnavs kept coming to Vancouver after that, or around the world. I think they were traveling a lot in 2011. 
And so they came here and Shamrani came here and my parents, you know, loving guidance uh, kind of arranged for me to spend time with Shamrani for that summer. I, I joined her a little bit. I was very fortunate to have her association for about two months. Um, and all the whole time I was with her, she was always, you know, because of that time period, just after Gurudev appeared to disappear, <laughs> she was speaking so much, so many affirmations of that, about Srila Gurudev, so many memories, just meeting all these Vaishnavs, I felt really like, you know, even though he had just appeared to disappear, for me, he was always like appearing in my heart through all these um, remembrances, Shamrani and Vasanti's association. Um, at that time, actually, Vasanti Didi just mentioned to me Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj as well. So I feel like that was Srila Gurudev's mercy. And, um, you know, over the years, many years, I kind of I had struggles with like, you know, who will I go to get Diksha from? Um, there's some stories there that I won't get into. <laughs> um, it's just another story, but always um, I was being affirmed by Shamrani Didi, you know, Gurudev's Guru. Even in Trinidad, um, she kind of had this. I said, you know, is this like, I just had some strange feeling in my heart. Like, is this, did I really get Harinam from Gurudev? And she said, of course, like that's all he was doing at that time. And she sat me down and said, okay, pretend we're back in Trinidad. And she said, promise to follow all these regulative principles and, you know, repeat after me. And she was just trying to like encourage me to follow and have faith in, you know, Srila Gurudev. So it's really, it was really sweet, but, um, yeah, and I, I always knew I had to have Diksha as well. So that was, it was kind of like um, uh, a journey with that. But then, um, yeah, she always said, you know, pray to Gurudev, Gurudev's your guru. And, you know, with different association, finding out who I should continue to take shelter from because we need that in spiritual life um, as well. And um, yeah, eventually, um, I was always listening to Srila Bharati Maharaj Harikata as well online somehow. Um, even like my brother was saying, it was in Hindi for a long time before Madhav Priya Prabhu was, started giving these excellent translations. Um, even other people were translating, but a lot of the time it was a lot of Hindi and I think Karunamai would listen with me, but we never understood it, but we were just grateful because we knew it was Shabda Brahma. <laughs> um, yeah, and then in 20, 2016, I think, 2017, um, uh, yeah, I had, so I had some situations with Diksha, like I really needed Diksha, there was, anyway, it's a whole story, but I really, um, I needed to hear like the pure mantras and everything, and I know I, from Srila Gurudev, what the importance of a Mahabhagavat Guru, um, what that is, and um, I, um, I, you know, I was always praying, and I think my father said, you know, maybe you have to wait like 40 years, <laughs> But I, I knew Srila Bharati Maharaj was there and I thought, okay, like, you know, maybe he won't give initiation. It was kind of like that Narada Muni, I don't know what that pastime is, but yeah, like even if, you know, you have to wait lifetimes to see Krishna, it's like, okay, at least there's a hope, you know, but I still remember the day I found out, I was like grocery shopping and I checked my phone and I saw Srila Bharati Maharaj was giving Diksha and I, I was so excited. <laughs> um, I knew that, would, that was it for me. I was really grateful. And um, then eventually, yeah, I, I always had trouble going to India. I don't know what my Sukriti is. I've um, never been able to go there actually, even though I was born in a devotee family. <laughs> it's some kind of karma or I'm just avoiding it somehow. And now it's like a big regret because it's not even a good time to go, but hopefully one day. Um, but I knew this was kind of a, an anarta of mine or something that I've, I'm blocked from India. <laughs> but um, I, I heard that he was, actually I had some time off and I was gonna go to, see some family and I thought, oh, maybe I'll go see Shamrani in Florida. And then I thought, oh, if they're there, maybe they can arrange a Skype for me to just quickly just get initiated by Bharati Maharaj. And then, um, I don't know, it was too short notice, so it didn't happen. And then Basanti wrote me later, like, oh, um, we're doing a, we're doing a Diksha, we're having an initiation ceremony, a bunch of people in Florida wanted, so can you come? And I, I kind of could, it was very difficult, but I took a few days and I just flew all the way there and, you know, received that. and. Um, I feel like that was, you know, everything was Gurudev's mercy, you know, just praying to Gurudev all the time was, he arranges everything, you know, everything you can want in the world. And then, you know, getting those mantras from Srila Bharti Maharaj did feel like cooling, like a, like moon, moon rays. As soon as I got that, I felt like, oh, okay, my spiritual life is um, going to be kind of okay just to have <laughs> Mahabhagava Guru. Now the responsibility is on me, really. <laughs> 
um, to follow and, you know, but at least I, I know I can, I'm safe in this shelter. So, um, yeah, I don't know so much else to say. I know like just yesterday I was thinking, you know, how I can glorify Shiva Gurudev and what my remembrances are and you know how maybe I'm not following bhakti so much it's so easy to look around sometimes at our life and say oh I'm so weak or this situation even aside from bhakti we can complain about our lives but um his presence in my life here and there and through my family and everything it's completely everything I have is is blessed because of Srila Gurudev everything um, that's auspicious for me, everything good. Um, it's all like Gurudev's mercy, you know. I know for sure, like, you know, even just living in a beautiful place like Vancouver, sometimes it's like these auspicious things I know are just a side effect of bhakti. So I think even any good things I get bad reactions from for trying to enjoy or anything, it's all actually just because of Krishna's mercy, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and it's because of Srila Gurudev, you know. So, um, I know Srila Bharati Maharaj, I'm not so good at quoting exact sastra or anything, but I know he said like gratitude really is bhakti, like true gratitude, especially nowadays we love to, people love to talk about gratitude and being grateful every day, but true gratitude is having bhakti. So um, with that, I know like just remembering this and realizing everything good I have as Gurudev's, then I hope, I just pray I can um, have some bhakti for Srila Gurudev. <laughs> and be able to really serve him and be able to really see um, that everything I have is his. I just heard recently from Siddhanti Marsh, I have to ask him who exactly said it, but I think it was one disciple of um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He, he gave a class and he explained how actually, you know, we say we're Krishna Nityadas, but we're actually Guru Nityadas. <laughs> um, that's like the summary, you know, so I hope to always remember that. Um, I'm a servant of Srila Gurudev and um, always, like my brother said, be close to his disciples. Um, it's like an honor to be counted in that family. And um, I hope to always realize what that means and just take the foot dust of everyone who has his love in their heart, um, his god brothers, his, my Guru Maharaj, everyone. Um, there's really nothing more auspicious in the whole world. Um, the cause of everything is really Krishna. This the reason everything exists is because this pastime, you know, like of Radharani, these associates, like it's like this thought I had yesterday. This whole world, you know, like all these things, it's all there just so Krishna's associates can <laughs> kind of play their part in it, you know. So I was thinking, like, you know, we have some, you know, in Vedic astrology they talk about you have, oh, you can have a good guru plant, good Jupiter, so it means you can have a good guru, but really it's just all Krishna's creation, you know, he's the one who creates Guru, he's the one who creates these planets, so it's all his um, merciful, really merciful um, creation and situation, so yeah, also, uh, I don't know, I was trying to think of Sastra to quote or something, but I'm just remembering the song Jai Jai Shri Guru, and I, that song always really spoke to me because I don't think I really ever asked for Hari Nam from Gurudev, but it says how, you know, even without asking, he voluntarily, you know, gave me Hari Nam. And I don't think I have so much Sukriti from my spiritual practice, which is not always so strong, but still, you know, he gives us all these books. Um, there's so much seva always to do if we just ask for it and make ourselves available. And um, anyway, so speaking today felt like some seva. <laughs> I felt a little unprepared, but I know my brother, he, he wanted to speak, uh, you know, some glorification to Gurudev before, during his Vyas Puja, and we never had that opportunity, and then Karunamai asked us, and I thought, oh yeah, it's great, I just, I love to tell this story, my, Lila, not to talk about myself, I find it quite embarrassing, but um, just to remember, you know, Gurudev's mercy is very um, powerful, so I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful for you for arranging this and everyone who's listening, <laughs> my most humble Dandava pronouns. And thank you so much. Jari, thank you so much. I have to say, looking at uh, your room, I'm a little jealous because I can see the sun beaming through the window. And uh, I'm, in, I'm in London and we don't, we don't get visited by the sun. It just misses us out completely. But uh, it's giving you it's giving you a nice halo, and yeah. um, 
Sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but I have to say Vancouver is known to be also Raincouver. So it's usually oh. raining. More just bright clouds, actually. In reality, it's it's kind of cloudy. <laughs> well, Shilgurde gave you a very beautiful name. And um, you may have been a little tentative about speaking because you classified yourself as a junior. But I didn't feel any anything junior in your heart today. I feel like you shared very fully and very beautifully. I can tell you're a very intelligent person. So I hope and I pray uh, that you employ all that intelligence in um, forging an even deeper and more beautiful relationship with Shira Gurudev, because I think your life is going to be very auspicious. I love what you said about um, in the company of Gurudev, his sangha is very, it's very alive, you know? It's like, it's, it, it's always amazing how Shira Gurudev actually always lived a perfect Vaishnava life, highly regulated, always super regulated, yet there was so much lightness around him and so much laughter and so much fun and so much teasing as well. And people really felt that they could be very natural with him and not put on any pretense, which is why being around him was so blessed all the time. Um, and indeed, I also really felt present when you were talking about how I'm not sure if you used the word flash of his blue eyes, but it felt like his blue eyes flashed at you in a glance. And in, um, in Chaitanya Charitamrita Majilila, chapter 22, 54, it describes in the purport, if you get glanced on by a sadhu for one lava, then uh, you will be, your life will be successful. And one lava, I think you got it right, is one eleventh of a second. So uh, as long as you got past the one eleventh of a second, you're in, you're in, the, you're in a beautiful place. Um, and you also mentioned about uh, the auspiciousness you felt around in your life from Gurudev. And um, it's explained, and you really feel it actually, is as you enter into a relationship with Gurudev, um, and like you said, the umbilical cord to Srila Gurudev through your beads, um, we don't really experience karma anymore. We experience creeper. What, what looks like karma is actually, he's bestowing exactly the right, he's using our karma, but for our creeper to develop our relationship with, with Srila Gurudev and ultimately with Mahaprabhu and, uh, and Radha and Krishna. So as, uh, as Bhakti Rakshak Srila Maharaj said, the environment is always favorable. So it's up to us to see the favorability in the environment, whether it's good or bad. I think sometimes it's harder to see the favorability when things are good, actually. Sometimes it's easier when it's bad. The hard, hard thing is to be really on the, um, on the uh, present when things are, are so-called good. Um, but there's no good or bad. There's just favorable for bhakti, actually. So thank you for plucking up the courage. I hope that you felt that the shravan of the audience was benign and sympathetic. Um, I know everybody here always wants our speakers to smile and be happy and be very, um, feel very connected in uh, the Pushpanjali. So I thank you very much, you and your brother, for beaming in from Vancouver. I also thank very much Karuna Mai for suggesting that you speak. That was very sweet. And um, I'm glad you have each other as well. That's very auspicious to have, you know, to be brother and sister as devotees is very auspicious. Although I know, you know, brothers and sisters always annoy each other and all that. I know that. But, you know, <laughs> aside of that, it's beautiful that you're both devotees. <laughs>